With Meridian Transit, travelling will be a glamorous adventure. That is what we are told from the Meridian Transit Corporation. They use the new Genesis Starliner built by Crusader Industries and they state that it offers space travel as it was meant to be. This is the new post on the Robert Space Industries website by Cloud Imperium. For those of you who are new to the game, Robert Space Industries website is the official site for Star Citizen and Squadron 42. This new post reminds us of how serious the developers take the production of Star Citizen. The immersion, once again, begins on the web. There is a, a recording later down the post, once I scroll down, that will trigger when I do scroll and we'll hear a little piece of what it might be like to be standing in a spaceport waiting to board a Starliner. There's also a little bit of what could be called lore based on an individual who is leaving what I think is Earth. I've only read it briefly. Um, I think it's Earth and they are they are deciding where they want to go and they will choose a, a Starliner in order to obviously get there. So I'm going to read that in this video um, and then I'm going to take a look at some other information lower down in regards to the, the Starliner's specs and a, a couple of images. All right, So let's begin. Crusader Industries is proud to present the LH-307 Genesis, the galaxy's premier narrow-body Starliner chassis. Chassis. <laughs> As most frequently equipped, the Genesis class includes support for 40 passengers and 8 crew. A fully modular, modular interior allows individual concerns to, be a, adapt, to adapt their ships to the task at hand, with aftermarket options for everything from complete luxury oriented staterooms to passenger free. Oh, oh, sorry. Passenger free cargo configurations. Before you learn more about this new ship and her systems, we thought you would enjoy a little adventure. It's time to step into the verse and take a ride on board one of Meridian Transit's dedicated Starliners. Here we have a really good image of Genesis itself, and it's not a, a pretty looking ship but as I've already commented on this post itself it's not meant to be either a lot of the, the special design exterior design elements really should be reserved for your combat ships and ships with uh, a role that does involve um, you know dealing with everything in the verse um, you know not just taking passengers from one planet to another what all this ship needs is a lot of power and a lot of shielding that uses that power and that is it. So it doesn't have to look great. The the most important thing will probably be, for the, uh, for from a player's point of view, especially a role player's point of view, will be what happens inside these ships. The, the sort of service that they provide to passengers and how realistic that is. The exterior will rarely be seen. Uh, by the pilot themselves because they will be they will probably get into this ship from a port I would imagine um, I can't I don't see why these ships would be stored in our hangars I could be wrong uh, but I don't think they should be um, you would imagine that they would be stored somewhere somewhere special then again you know they do belong to individual players and every other ship is stored in uh, a hangar I just think that it's with it being the type of ship that it is, uh, it belongs in some sort of service station where uh, a company, Meridian Transport, actually maintains it rather than, than the player themselves. Um, so obviously that could be a complete different idea and plan from the, what the developers have, but I personally, if I was to have one of these ships, I would want to feel that I was just a pilot, you know, I'm not the owner. If I owned one of these ships, why would I fly it? You know what I mean? You would hire hire someone else to fly it and get rich. Uh, so 
in terms of realism and lore, that's a lot to think about. Um, the question is, will we fly these ships? You know, I'm just assuming that you know we, the you know we will be able to fly them. Yes, I think we can. You know, I've seen a price at the bottom, which means we can buy these ships. It means we will. If we are flying these ships, we will be the ones flying over to a port and docking and then picking passengers up. Does that mean we have a wait while the passengers get on? And we have some rowdy passenger who is drunk or a player who wants to deliberately cause disruption and we have to wait on them? Maybe while we are waiting, we will get to look at uh, a manifest and maybe even reject some individuals from getting on our ship. That would be really great. Um, spotting a known terrorist or a you know, someone who's uh, known for pickpocketing at the ports and just stop them from getting on completely. Right, time to scroll down. I'm going to listen to a little recording or, or, or a couple that the developers have added to the page to, to create a, an immersive experience. Aging Jarish Yamil. Yamil to the service desk. Mr. Orm is Yamil to the service desk. The New York City Transit Bureau would like to welcome you to the Big Apple. We hope you enjoy your stay in Seoul. For the security of yourself and fellow travelers, please keep your belongings with you at all times. All unaccompanied items will be subjected to security scans and possible destruction. For the security of yourself and fellow travelers, please make sure to check all personal weapons at the security clearance desk. And now it's time to read the lore story. I shift my bag over to my left hand and immediately feel relief mixed with pain as my fingers tingle back to life, glancing down at the web of bright red stripes the canvas straps had imprinted on my palm. I sigh. Why had I packed so much? The answer was of course that I didn't know where I was going. For months now I had been saving creds, eating rehides, working double shifts at the plant when I could get them, even had limited myself to going to Bresser's only one night a week, all for the sake of this trip, me and Shelley's big adventure. As a fourth person bumped into me, trying to move past, I realised that I've been blocking traffic. Everyone in the Meridian Terminal must think I'm lost. Guess I kinda am. The pleasant voice on the loudspeaker chimes. Meridian Transit. Where will you go? The time to decide had finally come. I had put it off as long as possible, not wanting to fully admit that it was my call now. I knew I was going, that was never in question, but I still felt guilty deciding without her. Another person knocks into me as they hurry to catch their liner. For now, I better just get out of the way. I cut through the tide of travellers and head towards the relative safety of a small Meridian Gift Chaos. Can I help you? Just looking, I tell the board attendant. She shrugs and turns back to her glass. And having a small personal crisis, I add silently in my mind. Shelley was the one who was supposed to pick where we were going to go. This trip had been her idea. Ever since we were tiny, my sister had talked about getting off Earth. She had narrowed down the list, but the top choice changed week to week. Somewhere tropical or somewhere cold, somewhere fancy or somewhere more adventurous, the heart of the empire or somewhere on the fringe. Even when things had gotten really bad, she would still rattle on 
about why one place was better than another. Now the choice was up to me. Just pick. It's not that hard, okay? Where to go? Use the random num gen on my glass to choose. Follow the most attractive person I saw to wherever they were going. Give up and just go. Wait. Postcards like Shell used to collect. Perfect. I reached for the display and began flipping through the locations on the cards, hopeful that one will feel right. Goss system, Castra system, Rela system, the Soul system, Stanton system, or Terra system. Whoa, looking at those actually helped. I think I might be ready to decide. As the locations flicker past on the board, I can't help but be impressed by how many ships Meridian operates out of New York. Standing here it really did feel like you're at the heart of the Empire. Makes sense why Shelley picked them to fly with. They went everywhere. Plus, it didn't hurt that they were one of the first lines to use the new Genesis ships. If you're going, if you're going to get your ass dragged halfway across the verse, might as well be comfortable. Now let's see. The next thing we need to do on this page is select our destination. Here we have the departures and arrivals board, which is uh, a sign that we will get to do. Well, we'll get to see this in the game and get to make use of it in terms of the departure times and arrival times. The game is meant to be a sim as close to a simulation of space as possible, so I would guess that these times are accurate to actual transports coming and going from the the you know the boarding points. Um, I would like and hope to see them arriving close to on time and players will be able to to play by these times which will be you know a, a, a lot of fun. Um, I think everybody will have a shot of being a passenger just for the sake of feeling that they are you know, not a, a wealthy star captain of some sorts and, you know, jump on board one of these liners that may be flown by a player themselves. Now, so I'm going to select Terra over here. Um, I'll select Rylan because I had already selected Terra. And as you can see, the the boarding pass at the bottom is, is being updated. Now earlier on I edited the source, put my own name in there and I put for the destination I put Scotland and I took a screenshot so I'm uploading that to uh, probably Google Plus, Facebook and, and so on. Um, so yep, if you want to do that just right click and select inspect element. It will depend on the browser you have and if you have any extra tools or may you want to get extra tools to do that they are available and we can just edit the text on a site and you know it can it can be fun and useful like it like I just done I've got my own board and pass um, and that's it really but you know the the main thing on this isn't about what we can do here on the site um, you know it's nothing new that we can click on a web page and update some text elsewhere on that page what is important is the developers are immersing us within this story that I'm reading using these tools and it's something that you know I've never come across so not only is it a blog post it's a, an experience and the seriousness that the developers are showing in their website is a, a taste of what they are applying to the game itself and that's why they're making all this effort they're trying to raise a bar set an example and pull in more players for their game and you know if this is the first time you've been looking, you know if you've seen this post for the first time I'm pretty sure you would be hooked and very interested in what is going on in this project so let's move on 
and read the what is the, the rest of the story. I run my sleeve across my forehead, but it barely makes a dent in the sweat that is pouring down my face. Was it warm in here or just me? Glancing at the calm and comfortable face of the elderly gentleman in the neighbouring seat, it is painfully clear that it's just me. The ship was almost full now, all the seats near me holding excited passengers. At the ticket counter, I had debated if it was worth springing for one of the Dulux berths with a bed, but had opted to go with one of the main cabin seats instead and save creds for when I landed. The thickly cushioned chair is probably pretty comfortable, but I am too nervous to really tell. The elderly gentleman leans over and smiles at me. First time flying off world? I nod. You got nothing to worry about. These new Genesis are about as good as they come. You barely feel the jumps. Thanks, I manage to reply. His eyes narrow slightly. You'll tell me if you're going to hurt. Hurl, right? Before I can reply, a flight attendant stands at the head of the aisle. Greetings, and thank you for choosing to travel the stars with Meridian Transit. Today's flight will feature a complimentary beverage and meal service about two hours after takeoff. But snacks and drinks are available at all times in the observation lounge. We're moments from launching, but before we do, we'd like everyone to use this time to familiarise themselves with our brand new Crusader Industries Genesis Class Starliner and review our safety protocols on their Moby Glass. Now here is that very ship. Crusader Industries Genesis Class Starliner. This is uh, an impressive image. It's large enough to be a desktop wallpaper if you fancy that. And the images down here give us a little look at the, the, the actual shape and silhouette of the, the, the ship. There have already been a lot of comparisons to ships, not just in Star Citizen, but other games, including the Romulan, the Derridics ship from Star Trek. There are similarities. Um, there always are similarities from one ship to another. They can only be so different, right? Uh, this ship, I would say, does have a, a very close resemblance to, to many other ships. It does have a striking shape in terms of the you know what we we would call the wings being at the rear. I think that the design is well suited for its purpose. The images over here show that the Starliner has uh, two main engines. Let me just open that up. So here we have main engines one and two, and then the rear loading ramp. And it's you know I considered the possibility of being able to sneak into that rear rear loading ramp should we not actually be on the passenger manifest. In that situation, if the passenger manifest was full, all 40 passengers and eight crew members on board, would that mean that the you know technically the Starliner would be overpopulated? If the game allowed that, then how would it deal with you know finding you on the Starliner during transit, etc.? Obviously, it would be a security issue. Will the developers take steps to ensure that no one can actually sneak in the back there, make it impossible, far too much security, maybe technology on board that detects you, etc.? Who knows? But these are questions that will have to come up at some point because I, for one, would love to try and sneak into a cargo area and take the crew by surprise. Now, here we are on the Genesis technical overview. 
I did want to begin with the holo viewer and then come to the technical overview but there's a slight issue with the positioning of this ship. Now this ship was only just released so there's no surprise that there's a, a small uh, change required there. So I'll just leave the holo viewer for this, this time. The technical overview shows that this ship is focusing on being a passenger transit. It is 85 meters long, 200, almost 276 thousand kilograms in mass. It has a maximum crew of eight persons and a cargo capacity of 403. This Genesis has four tier 7 primary engines and 16 tier 2 manoeuvring thrusters. The power plant offers six uh, sevens and the hard points overview shows a gimbal mount, a single gimbal mount, S5, and two S7 shields, which to me are ideal. The S7 shields ensure that anyone considering attacking the, the Genesis Starliner will have to take their attack very seriously and make a very, very quick attempt at taking the shields down because I would imagine the UEE will treat st start the attack of a Starliner more seriously than a lot of the things going on in the verse and they will respond very quickly due to the, the potential loss of you know large amounts of life. So we're talking 40 passengers and 8 crew. So a distress call from one of these space whales is going to get a response pretty quickly. Someone is going to turn up, especially the the org of such a ship because I don't imagine there will be a lot of them. So the ones that, that they do have they'll want to protect. I say that because I strongly believe these will be credit earners but they will not be as an exciting play as everything else and therefore I doubt we're going to see a lot of players sticking to these ships and using them religiously for hours on a daily basis. So when one is in action we'll probably know about it because it will make good credits without spending resources and therefore we're talking profit and we want that to happen as part you know as you know for for the org in general. There are no additional equipment, but I can see that changing in future versions of the Genesis. I can imagine the Genesis being adapted for a lot of uses because the the description mentions it being adapted to carry cargo. Now, if we imagine it being adapted to cargo, carry a mix of cargo and passengers, then we can imagine scientists with their equipment coming on board, the Genesis being adapted to power that equipment or the additional equipment here actually requiring slots because the equipment is specialised and will be um, you know, hooked up to the ship and using the, its power. So you know, things like that may come. And then there's a, a military version. I would like, this came into my head, let me know what you think. I would love a, a liner that looks civilian, appears civilian on the outside, but is actually being used by the military. So you have an interior of what you would basically call, you know, intelligence, intelligence officers who are at computers using all sorts of equipment to spy on you know an enemy or a corporation etc I would love to see something like that so you have one of these ships as we've seen in this video and you know you fly by it and you assume that there are 40 passengers relaxing enjoying the ride and just you know eight normal crew members going about their business when in fact there's a there could be a military package on there um, you could have marines and all sorts of things um, that would be great and obviously it would be up to us, depending on where we are in the verse and our job in the verse, to try and detect these things and when we do detect that uh, a so-called civilian liner is not what it appears to be, then we have to deal with that 
if that is if we are on the side of say pirates smugglers etc uh, we would probably report it to not just our org but other orgs that operate in our area and systems alright so that's just an idea there that maybe just maybe we can push to the dev developers if you if you like it the next part in our journey on this post named introducing the Genesis Starliner is the FlySafe security brochure. I've looked over it a couple of times and I feel there's a couple of hints in there as to what we will be able to do, the activity that may happen on a Starliner and I think there may be a couple of humorous parts as well. So some of it you can't take serious because the, the brochure is there as an, a, you know, a point of immersion in this story that we're reading in the post. But the whole thing is fantastic. The developer's effort and their ability to change what is normally in a blog, uh, you know, a, a block of you know some blocks of text with some images and maybe a video, into what is I'm feeling feeling an experience. So here we have the Starliner safety information. It shows what we see in you know the real world in terms of flying. Prepare for takeoff, buckle yourself up. We have collision crash procedure, and I find this part humorous. You know, put your head down, etc. Yeah, could you imagine that being the advice in hundreds of years' time? Um, probably not. I think there'd be a whole other thing going on when, when uh, a ship is going to crash. So, you know, it is a bit of humor. There's no need for the developers to take the technology for a crash any further for the sake of realism because I think that would be taking taking it too far really I, I can't imagine a lot of these crashing so all this as I said is just to fill a brochure and the point is that the brochure is immersive um, it shows in case of emergency hit an alarm and we have some marines turning up and there's obviously someone injured because eventually there's blood uh, you know streaming the, the idea of marines being there may indicate that marines are on board at all times or they may be able to turn up the UEE may be able to turn up and safely board quickly with authorization from the the captain or crew on board so there could be a whole thing going on there if you want to be a marine especially a marine who is a medic and you can turn up and you know not just save lives but you may be able to you may be able to just simply stop bleeding while they are then taken away for for proper medical attention. Now, the general warning prohibited travel items and procedures list is very small, worryingly small. It goes from no stem smoking and finishes with no disabling of smoke detectors. In between we have explosives, hacking and weapons mentioned. I can think of a, a lot of other things that should be in that list. So hopefully, hopefully the security on board, our Starliners, can think of those same things as well. And they aren't just working on this small list. Right, next is the Know Your Exits. Again, it's probably just to fill the brochure because not a lot of these things are going to crash on a planet. I, don't, I can't see situations where NPC or players need to run out of these exits in any sort of emergency. But who knows, if the developers are not putting instructions, restrictions in place that I've already imagined, then it may mean that things could get absolutely chaotic on a Starliner if somebody chooses to target one of these and, you know, well think about it, 40 passengers home, you know, and one of these is possibly like shooting fish in a barrel. So, watch out for your regular terrorist and know your exits. Over here we have prohibited in passenger areas images, a weapon and what appears to be some sort of snake. Uh, I've wondered, you know, the prohibited in passenger areas indicates that there are, um, well we know there are larger, you know, other areas that are, you know, fairly large, especially the cargo area. Um, the fact that it does say passenger areas would tell us that the there will be weapons on board somewhere for some purpose again probably marines or the the weapons may be in a locker and in case of 
pirate attack and the crew would be able to use the weapons maybe not maybe again it's just a, a, a little image to fill this brochure um, I, I have had them use an idea of releasing some snakes and having snakes on a starliner um, so um, that would be pretty cool and realistic to find store all containers full of dangerous pets and exotic animals that are possibly illegal and then just quietly releasing them just for fun now next is escape pod operations obviously these ships must have escape pods there must be enough for all crew and passengers you hope <laughs> right uh, what I wonder is you know what will be the mechanism to prevent people jumping in these for fun because I certainly would I'll do it probably you know week one when the game goes live and get get that on YouTube so what is the what is the mechanism to allow people to use escape pod operations will it be that the the pilot needs to activate the, the a specific alarm will it be that any crew member can activate that alarm and would a certain amount of damage to the ship automatically allow people to use escape pods there would have to be some sort of indication that we can use the escape pods or not before actually running up to them because all you would have is you know NPC 40 NPC approaching the, the escape pods or running about you know in all directions uh, you know I just can't I can't imagine how the game and the, the AI will handle it um, unless the AI is really going to be that superb that you have the various sort of scenarios people getting up and moving about others staying in the seat just you know crying their eyes out um, and etc now then there obviously there's players who are being passengers they may they may get to the escape pod find they're not allowed to use it and and then wonder what the hell they are meant to do from there on so you know would that be a great experience as a pa you know a, a, a player you would then maybe approach the the cockpit and be mistaken for you know part of the problem whatever is going on so who knows what what scenarios this game is realistically going to allow um, we have the oxygen loss image over here it would be fairly simple for them to provide mass that we can we can grab and, and use uh, we've seen the videos of the advanced object handling it's all very very well done it looks very realistic so I can imagine these masks hang, hanging there our characters reaching out and grabbing them and we done the the oxygen masks and you know a certain scenario so there we are as a player player passenger sitting in our seat with an oxygen mask on is that the gameplay that you want I mean, how long would you have to sit there what is it exactly you're waiting on you know again we come back to you know the question will we actually get to be passengers is there any point um, if we are allowed to be passengers is this brochure just you know is it just there for fun and all of this is or some of it and especially these oxygen masks are you know never going to happen because the scenarios that they lead to um, just open more doors that the developers probably won't closed okay I think that's that, that Next, I continue the, the lower story, and it reads, Glancing up from my Moby, I ask my seat companion, How often do these things actually get attacked by outlaws? Not as often as they used to, that's for sure, he replies with a completely non-comforting wink. The loudspeaker chirps to life, attention all crew, prepare for launch. A deep vibrating rumble causes my arm hairs to stand on end as the Starliner's engines roar to life. It is clear to me now that this is a mistake. I don't care what I promised, Shelley. I start to fumble out of my seat, but it's too late. A burst of inertia forces me back as the thrusters push us out of the hangar. I was doing it. I was leaving Earth. With some difficulty, I managed to swallow. 
We're in vacation, supposed to be relaxing. Out the window, the blue midday sky turns quickly to black. Now here we have, I'm sorry, I've just clicked on that. Um, yep, you have a postcard, I think, that I have. Never seen it getting, you know, larger before. Right, there you go. As soon as you click on it, it gets larger. It's, you know, it just fills the screen. It's brilliant. Um, so it says, hey, Zypher, hope you're doing okay. I know we haven't ever really talked that much, but Shelley asked that I send you a postcard from wherever I wound up. So here it is. So this is obviously, um, it's Carden who as sisters with Shelley and the the developers have set up as if they're sending it to us personally which is brilliant and um, it goes on to say I know people always like to compare Prime and New York but I'm starting at I'm stating it now for the record there's no competition New York blows everything Terra has out of the water don't get me wrong, Atlas Tower is pretty impressive and it's nice that the rail is so clean. But where's the personality? The heart? You walk along the street and don't smell anything. To be honest, it's probably my fault for trying to compare the two. Not really in the travelling spirit. Shelley would have yelled at me for it, but I ate dinner at an Earth-themed restaurant last night. Apparently, if you believe this place, all anyone on earth eats is avocados. <laughs> when I get back, maybe we can meet up or something, eat some real earth food. All the best, Cardin. Now, I'm not sure if I've clicked on another one of those. I'm just going to check if there's one further down. Nope. Because I've, I read it earlier and... Let me see. Hmm. Well, I read it earlier and the text was different. So, let's try again. Right, that's the same one. Try once more. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. I'll just refresh the, the page. Definitely different text on a, a, a postcard just like that one that comes up. Right, I've just realised what it is. It's obviously the destination that we that we pick changes the, the postcard down there. So does that mean I've got to <laughs> read all of them in this video? Okay, give me a moment. What I may do is publish very small videos that cover each. There we go, soul system. I may make a video on each one. Yeah, okay, so I hope you're doing okay. I know we haven't ever really talked that much, but Shelley asked, so the introduction is the same. In the end, I decided to visit Mars. I know technically it's not out of the system, but hey, a different planet is still a different planet. I'm sure Shell would understand. I mean, looking up at the sun and seeing that it was a different size, that was pretty neat. And at night, seeing Earth up in the sky as a small dot of light definitely puts things in perspective. Kind of makes you think about how small we all are. I chose to stay in Port Renatus. Figured I would explore classic Mars and see some of the old settlements. Best part was going on a tour of the red gas distillery. distillery. I toasted a few times in Shelley's honour, even got the rest of the tour group to join in. Let's just say I wasn't appreciating the sun as much as the next morning. When I get back, maybe we can meet up or something. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go through each destination in this video, but as soon as I'm done doing this, I'm going to go through each one and just make a very small video for YouTube, just for the sake of get, getting it on there. Um, and if you're interested, just go to the destinations and you know read them individually. The next thing I'm going to read is about the Genesis Starliner.
with proprietary Neo G engines, the Starliner allows for fuel efficient duration travel. A pair of remote operated turrets allow for a good defence and multiple decks can support everything from first class lounges to additional cargo capacity, whether it is the centrepiece of a private space line or part of a larger system of passenger transports, the Genesis can be used for a variety of support roles. Potential owners and operators can rest easy, the Starliner is a ship designed to pay for itself. Now it's that comment right there that made me think the price of this Starliner is actually quite low and I think, I really think another version will come later with some more advanced equipment on board for various purposes. Now next it has a title about Crusader Industries. Crusader Industries headquartered in the Stanton system is the United Empire of Earth's premier passenger slash freight transport development company. Crusader designs are produced in the Stanton system but are, common sight, are a common sight throughout the galaxy. Ubiquitous in both private enterprise and military support roles. The LH-307 Genesis is, a Crusaders, is Crusader's mid-range passenger spacecraft which has found success in a variety of roles around the galaxy. Crusader produces a number of other civilian space frames ranging from small in-system commuter transports to high capacity superliners. Um, that is very interesting. Superliners in the hands of players uh, sounds to me like a lot of fun and a lot of danger. The next is Starliner Philosophy. One of our dreams when planning Star Citizen was to go beyond the typical space sim experience. We've built a lot of ships along traditional lines. Fighters, bombers, battleships and carriers all have a natural and fun gameplay role in a world at war. Ships like the Orion, the Karak and the Reclaimer all come naturally to mining asteroids, exploring new worlds and the like are all types of gameplay that fall naturally into our universe. But with the Starliner we are introducing something new, a ship that doesn't have a naturally apparent style of gameplay. We have said it again and again over the past two years. We want Star Citizen to be a living, breathing world, which means spending resources building out and building up ships that would exist in a real world, even when they are combatants or adventurers. Our job with the Starliner was to determine how passenger travel in the verse would be both fun and necessary, and then to build out a ship worthy of that system. Designers have spent a lot of time working on the realism, everything from safety features detailed below to a plan for how to make passenger travel fun, interesting and rewarding for those who choose to fly the Genesis. For more information on how Star Citizen will feature gameplay designed specifically for passenger transport and beyond, please visit tonight's design post. Now that's interesting, I haven't visited that post yet. I'm just going to open that quickly and take a, a quick look. So Comlink Transmission Design Civilian Passenger Transport and it says it reads here a unique occupation for Star Citizen. I'm just going to take a look at what sort of post this is and give my, my, my thoughts on it. So we have a starting career and this may cover some of the, the questions that I've been raising myself. So we have reputation, ISIS, ISIS. Alright, this is looking very interesting. The mix, master. Okay, so we have a whole lot of role playing going on here. Medical diagnosis and treatment on board. As you would expect, flight attendants touching down. Right, so I, I, I still imagine that all of my own questions are not answered in there and I'm not covering that in this video because this video is going to be long enough. So we'll sort of wrap it up as soon as possible and I may make a separate video for, for that post I've just opened. Um, so I'm just going to move down.
but on potential variants. Transit companies use several different configurations for the Genesis Starliner, usually classified as luxury, mid-ranged and essential bare bones. Because every Starliner is significantly modular, there is no one standard example of each type. More complex models typically carry fewer passengers but with additional amenities, lounges, food options, personal quarters. The essential model focuses more on bulk cargo and less on crew and passenger comfort. The model available in the concept sale today is the 40 person and mid range class. Right, so that is the first of me reading that, and I have already mentioned that I think there would be variants in the future, probably when the game, you know, I, I would imagine the, the the big variants will be when the game is live. Uh, I'm I'm thinking along the lines of you know you know entertainment, large cinemas, uh, maybe sports on board and things like that. They may take up equipment slots and need hard points of some some sort. So we may see various changes to the the design and specifications, which is interesting. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, probably buying one of these ships now with lifetime insurance is going to benefit someone who's interested in this class of ship and upgrading as the years go by in this game when these other variants are released. The next part without a title is private individuals have also been known to purchase Starliners for their own use, most frequently outfitted yacht style with individual cabins. This, the frame is frequently used by professional racing teams who modify the interior to store and repair small racing ships like the M50 and their support equipment. The United Empire of Earth military also modifies the standard Genesis space frame for a number of different roles, including a troop transport, patrol hunter killer, SWAC slash CNC platform, referred to informally as the Star Lifter, Star Hunter and Star Seeker, and even as an advanced aerospace prototype test bed, Imperator 1, a highly customized Genesis Starliner with added security and luxury features is used to ferry the sitting Imperator when they travel off world. Okay, so you know maybe I should read things through and then read the post. It's not something I normally do because you know reading it through takes time and I have very limited time but I've raised questions that are sort of beginning to be covered. Um, this indicates that this ship can be used for just about anything. How how that will actually reflect in the game if you know in terms of realism um, I can't imagine all of these roles being covered very soon but if the developers mention it then it's something they want to be able to do and I think I've already I think I mentioned earlier about the my idea of military being on board a ship that appears to be civilian. Now this image here shows all sort of designs. There's even the UEE on the outside of it, the exterior, RSI is on there. But who's to say that we cannot obtain uh, a ship with a different ex painted exterior? You know, at what point does the decoration come in and, and will we ever get to have the exterior ship repainted the way that we want. Um, if that's a service that we can make use of in, in the verse, realistically, as, as I think we should, then we would be able to do exactly what I've, I've said. And all of this starts to sort of indicate that, you know, everything will be in place to do just that. All we need is the ability to change the paint job, which is something I've never, I've never heard being possible yet. Um, I'm not saying customize the paint job, I'm just mean maybe various options that you know make it almost customized. Next is the details of the sale. Okay, so we have a sale one. I'll just quickly read this and that's that's me done. Almost one hour. Uh, we are offering these pledge ships to help fund Star Citizens development. All of these ships will be available for in-game credits in the final universe, and they are not 
required to start the game. Additionally, all decorative flare items will also be available to acquire in the next to acquire in the finished game world. The goal is to make additional ships available that give players a different experience rather than a particular advantage when the persistent universe launches. The Genesis Starliner is being offered for the first time as a limited concept sale. This means that the ship design meets our specifications but it is not yet ready to display in your hangar or fight an arena commander. The sale includes lifetime insurance on the ship hull and a pair of decorative items for your hangar. A future patch will add a Genesis poster and then once the in-game models are finished you will also be given an in-game Genesis miniship model. Each ship will have its own model and poster. In the future the ship price will increase and the offer will not include lifetime insurance or these extras. If you'd like to add one to your fleet, they're available in the Pledge Store until Monday, July the 6th. You can also view a detail of the ship in the tech overview of the ship page. Remember, we are offering this Pledge ship to help fund Star Citizen's development. Um, I think that's a repeat there of the, the first paragraph. Let me come down and we can see the eye from Britain have the price displayed in pounds, 260 pounds probably comes in around $300. I think that price is slightly lower than what the ship could be worth, even this this version of it. I think I think that because I think it will be. Uh, how many times do I need to say? I think I reckon <laughs> this will be a credit earner an easy credit earner, a very safe credit earner. I can't imagine a lot of damage being sustained on these ships. The the risk to losing them has to be minimum. If we are careful about the routes that we fly, if we are you know flying them, the the ship ship shields should allow us to get through any attack that we, we come across. The engine should allow us to get, you know, out of a situation quickly and I just can't see us ever losing the ship. If we do lose the ship, <laughs> I doubt we will ever get to pilot again. No, we would get to pilot it again. Um, I don't know how the game will handle um, the sort of reputation of a pilot who loses 40 passengers per, you know, per, per attack sort of thing. So, um, you know, it would be interesting to see if realism s is stopped at a certain point there rather than being, you know, having a history of, you know, as someone who loses passengers on a regular basis. Um, so yeah, £260, I, I, would, I would say it's worth 300 in terms of what this ship is going to be able to do and then the upgradeability of it later um, when when we can melt it, etc. Um, obviously the lifetime insurance is in there as well. I may be wrong. And that's obviously coming from someone who can't actually afford to buy this. I, I don't even have a, a computer that can run Arena Commander because I just don't, I can't afford it at all. And that is why I have a GoFundMe campaign asking Star Citizens who enjoy my videos to put in a little bit of money there. If enough of you do it, then I'll be able to buy a computer. I'll be able to not only play Arena Commander, but I will be able to produce better videos because I will also buy better sound equipment etc and the second screen um, along with the first screen for a new PC would be very handy right now I'm on a quite a broken down laptop the you know there's keys on it that don't even work and only one USB slot that is no joke so um, yep if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see me making more uh, or you know either way I'm going to make more but the any donation that comes in on the GoFundMe campaign Will, will you know push me that bit more I'll get even more videos out there uh, at a faster pace All right. thank you very much for watching this and thank you in advance to any comments or you know just even brutal feedback is always appreciated alright see you in the verse folks